What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chung and Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? As you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast, welcome back to another episode. It's now episode 35. If you're new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts, do, do us a quick favor by liking and subscribing, and turn on post notifications, and commenting hashtag Let's Go Viral. But you know, today we got special episodes for you guys. As always, we're going to talk about the Phoenix Suns, Utah Jazz, and the Denver Nuggets, and what we think these three teams need to do in order to be able to win an NBA Finals this postseason. But you know, before we hop into that, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, which is Andy Ho. We appreciate you liking and subscribing and supporting our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. But you know, the first team we're going to deep dive into is the Phoenix Suns. And Greg, what are your takes on them? I love what they're doing this season. I love what Monte Williams is bringing in his player development and just hats off to him for having them seventh in offensive rating, fifth in the defensive rating. So top 10 in both areas. I mean, I just love what he's doing and the pieces that he has and how he's implementing them and getting, getting the best out of each player and starting with Devin Booker. I mean, he's a baller bucket getter he can do everything he can get to the basket three level score i mean he's gonna he's gonna he's the leader of the team besides besides chris paul i mean chris paul a great addition his leadership his basketball iq how he sees the game and bringing all these young guys together and putting them in the best putting those young guys in position to you know bring the best out of them on the court i love their the pieces around him jay crowder the three and d player that he can shoot the three but also guard guard on the other end Mikel Bridges who's coming around on the defensive end and I think he can be a great 3 and D player he shoot 41% from the three point line I th- Cam- Cameron Johnson another guy is who's 6'8 out of North Carolina shooting really well from the three point line bringing space in the floor I mean DeAndre Ayton what he brings in the, in the interior force he's in the attention that he brings off the pick and roll he's getting better on he's getting better on the defensive end and, and guarding the pick and roll so I mean just everything everybody's benefiting from a from a lead, from the leadership from Monte Williams and the point from the point part point guard position Chris Paul and I just love how this team is playing right now they're playing really good and nicely what you thinking uh, I mean, I love the mental makeup of this Phoenix Suns roster. I mean, you know, you have a healthy balance of, you know, young core players and also mixed in with, you know, some veteran guys who have pretty much pretty good playoff experience. But, um, you know, starting with Chris Paul, I mean, you know what you're going to get from him throughout the postseason. You know, he's somebody who, he's one of the best leaders in the NBA, if not the best. Um, you look at the mental makeup of this team. You got a ton of young players who, you know, can shoot the shit out of the ball especially from beyond the yard. You have a defensive mindset. Your top seven in um, defensive rating, I believe, and top five in offensive rating. But, you know, like you said, but, you know, this Phoenix Suns team, we have some questions about them just because, you know, the lack of postseason experience. Um, We don't know how these young players are going to handle the pressure and, you know, deal with the matchups and the different defensive schemes that they would normally be accustomed to in the regular season. So with that being said, there's a that's the biggest question mark with this roster. But I think in order for, you know, the Suns to be able to compete for an NBA title this year, I think Devin Booker has to be somebody who averages nearly 30 points per game in the postseason. Yeah. You know, you look at this roster, they have one of the best benches, if not the best bench in the NBA. They're plus five in scoring when Chris Paul and Devin Booker are out of the game. So I look I look at that type of situation and I think, okay, if Devin Booker can, you know, put a ton of pressure on the defensive player that's guarding him, that's going to open up the floor for, you know, so many other guys who are going to be able to knock down open threes, get buckets in transition, get offensive rebounds, you know, just things like that. But, I mean, what is your thoughts on, you know, DeAndre Ayton as a player overall? I think DeAndre great Ayton is great. I think that on the defensive end, he's a great shot blocker. He can move his feet. I think he's getting better on – guarding the pick and roll and when the when the when drop coverage needs to be used and stuff like that and guarding the pick and roll because the pick and roll is the staple in the nba if you don't know how to guard a pick and roll it's going to be a nightmare for you so i think that he's getting better at that and getting his defensive iq better on that side of the ball but on the offense pick and roll he's great he can he's drawing the defense in which is creating that space and why they're shooting really good from the three-point line as of right now and just spacing out the floor and he's really helping them on the offense and defensive end i i see that continuing into the playoffs and he he needs to be big too i think that he needs to come be elevate his game he can get to 15 18 with maybe 12 12 to 15 rebounds in the playoffs he needs to elevate his game just just like chris paul and devin booker need to so i think he needs to be that third option on the team right and i think if he is that third option he's the person that can be the deciding factor in whether or not this team wins an nba finals this postseason but you know 
moving on, we're going to talk about the Denver Nuggets. What do you think they need to do in order to be able to hold up that trophy at the end of the season? I think the Denver Nuggets need to figure out right now without Jamal Murray, who's going to be your secondary guy. Obviously, we're, we're really high on Michael Porter Jr. I know you really like him, and he's been playing really recently lately. You could talk about that, but um, I think on the who's going to be that second guy outside of Jamal Murray? Who's going to come along with him? And I think Michael Porter can do, do it. He's been playing really well. He's finally getting comfortable, getting to his spots, and finding openings in the in the defense where he can attack and use his strength. But I love Jokic and his and his mind that he brings and his IQ at the center position and spacing everybody out and putting them in positions where they can succeed i love monte morris and his him being a backup guard to jamal murray they're not they're not losing anything in that position i think he can come in especially off the pick and roll in offense and come in and really create offense and create for himself and create for others so i and think capazzo has also been very beneficial yeah, for him. and if people do not know about capazzo he, he's a rookie but he he played in the euro league he won a euro league championship so he has championship and playoff experience so that's another aspect that a lot of people don't understand and know about and he can shoot the ball too i think he shoots like 38 percent of four around that range in the front of three-point line so i mean he can shoot too and they have pj dozer i think he he needs to get a little bit more development they have to michael green a nice little veteran they have will barton who i like um he can create too so i mean i love this team and the makeup on this team and i think that they will without jamal murray they just need to figure out who's going to be that second option right and i think offensively you know this team they're not going to struggle in the postseason you know especially when the level of play slows down and everything because this team, they're the third best offensive rating team in the NBA. They're second in field goal percentage. One of the best three-point shooting teams in this league. And, you know, with all that factoring in, I think that's one of those biggest things that will help them in the postseason overall. But, you know, there's two guys that I want to kind of highlight that I feel like will be the deciding factor in how far this team goes this year. And starting off with Michael Porter Jr. Like you said, you know, he's been going bananas this season, especially since the All-Star break. This is a guy who went from averaging 13 points to 21, giving you 8.6 rebounds a game, and not passing it too well. I mean, he's obviously, that's not his role. He's only giving you 1.1 assists per game. Yeah. But, you know, outside of that, he's been somebody who's been very productive this season. I think he can be that number two option for Jokic if, especially since, you know, Jamal Murray's been out. And I don't think that, you know, Murray's injury is going to affect this team all that much. I'm not saying that they're good without him, but I don't think it's necessarily calling it quits just because, you know, he won't be able to perform this postseason. But, you know, with all that coming into account, I think Michael Porter Jr., if you utilize him and he give that guy the confidence to, you know, knock down shots, become the player that Kyle Kuzma thinks he is <laughs> and um, you know just put him in position to where he can score the ball at an efficient rate and you know get him to his spots and everything I think Michael Porter Jr. can be one of the deciding factors in how far this team goes but another guy that I kind of want to highlight as well is Aaron Gordon I feel like Aaron Gordon is one of the best offensive versatile players that we don't talk about enough, especially on, on the defensive end. You know, I think he's somebody, he can guard a LeBron James and be able to contain guys like, you know, Jay Crowder in the postseason, um, possibly uh, Anthony Davis even. But, you know, I think depending on how this Nuggets team utilizes him is how they're going to perform in the postseason as well. If you put him in situations where he, he can ex excel in off-ball screens, whether he's the screener or going to be the guy receiving the ball, I think that can, you know, keep the defense on their toes and also make this offense a lot more predictable. But what are your final thoughts? Yeah, that, 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 I totally agree. And that's what, that was one of my concerns is that how are they going to defend when, when the playoffs start? When, when there's mis when there's mismatches and different stuff that different offensive sets and stuff on the offensive end that the Lakers or the Clippers do that they might get confused and having a versatile guy like an Aaron Gordon who can who can guard those versatile wings is very huge and I'm glad they made that addition right and Torrey Craig and J Jeremy Grant losing those two guys they did a lot for your defense and a little bit for your offense last year so Aaron Gordon he's got some big shoes to fill but you know I think the Nuggets have a legitimate shot to make the conference finals after the Los Angeles Clippers but moving on our final team that we're going to talk about is the Utah Jazz now the Utah Jazz they have a we already know their mental makeup live by the three die by the three this is the fourth best three-point shooting team in the NBA they've got five players that shoot above 36 percent from the three-point line they got an, uh, an all-star caliber player in Donovan Mitchell and in Rudy Gobert these are two big factors in the NBA that you know can really decide on how far this team goes but my biggest concern 
with the Utah Jazz is I don't think they have really a consistent way that they score the ball outside of the three-point line. And I think that's something that, you know, they need to address before postseason. And, you know, Quinn Snyder, he's going to have to, you know, execute some way that, you know, he can get guys like Jordan Clarkson, um, O'Neal in better positions to score the ball outside of from three. But, you know, I'm not saying take away the three-point shot, but, you know, I just think that on nights when you're cold, you're going to have to have an alternative way to score the ball. But, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. And, yeah, they need to. They You can't just live and die by the three. It's not going to work. And um, in a seven-game series, you're, you're bound to have at least one or two, three, maybe, maybe three bad games from the three-point line. So they have to figure that out. And I think they will. I mean, right now they have – and they have a chance to right now without Donovan Mitchell. They need to figure out, you know, who's going to be that next option. And I think, in my opinion, I think it's I think it's Mike Conley. Mike Conley is a great guard, veteran guard, who can shoot the ball. Obviously, he's in a three-point contest, shooting 41, 41% from the three-point line. He can make great decisions off the pick and roll. And I think what Rudy brings to the offensive end now, I mean, he's drawing people to the paint. And I think he, he's more decisive. I feel like he's better coming off the roll, very efficient, very, like, he, he, he rolls better. He rolls with confidence. And I like I to see that. And um, so that's drawing a lot of a lot of attention to him in the paint, which is open up shooters for Bidonovich, Niang, O'Neal, Clarkson, who's a six-man of the year candidate. I love what he brings off the bench, and that's helping them a lot. Ingles, I mean, they have a lot of shooters. And um, they're not very deep, and that might, that might question me just a little bit. But I think that if they figure out with Donovan Mitchell being out, who's going to be that next guy who's going to step up and with their defense too. I mean, their defense is very good too. I think the momentum that they're having right now and how they play as a team and play great team de- defense on the perimeter and they talk and the communication, c- communication is very important, especially guarding the pick and rolls and different sets that they might see in the playoffs and the different play styles. So I think the Utah Jazz are very good and they're very underrated. And a lot of people don't talk about them. So I wanted to give them praise and Quinn, Ni- Quinn Snyder praise. Right. And I think the last point, Donovan Mitchell is obviously going to be, you know, the person that dictates where this team goes. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of great moments with him in the postseason, especially last year. Um, But, you know, we've also seen some times this year where Donovan Mitchell, he seems to, you know, lose his concentration, especially down the stretch. But I think his biggest problem is like his mentality at times. Sometimes he kind of turns into Russell Westbrook and he plays. He gets caught up in a one on one game and, you know, things like that and I think that can hurt the Utah Jazz in the postseason especially if you're going up against a smart defensive team that you know knows how to take away some of your strengths and everything but you know outside of that I feel like as long as he plays his game and you know doesn't overdo it and doesn't you know rely on hero ball I think the Utah Jazz could legitimately make it to the conference finals and possibly upset a team like the Los Angeles Clippers. But what do you guys think? Let us know what y'all think in the comment section. Uh, We appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. It's now episode 35. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on post notifications. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to give us a nicer review and give us a five-star rating on our podcast overall. But, you know, outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.